ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Mulvaney's about to come on. This dude is an Amazon beast. A billion dollars plus in products sold and shipped and uh, you know just executed on Amazon. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. We're going to be diving into that growth, that journey, all that he's done. Before that, though, I'm talking to you because you're becoming your greatest possible self. However, I can support you in that. Let's keep growing. Let's keep impacting lives together. Whether it's staying tuned to the 12-hour marathon and podcast, becoming your greatest possible self, taking your next steps with Ryan, staying connected with him on his journey, launching your own podcast, getting coaching from us and burning up coaching, whatever it is, keep growing into your greatest possible self. Good or good? Very good. Next up is the iTunes review of the week. And this week it's by Logics. Logics says such passion and high energy. Chris provides such enthusiasm in all he does because it's who he is. His podcast is a great resource with fabulous guests and I'm excited to have found this platform to learn as much as possible to expand my life on so many levels. Logics, thank you so much. And if you want a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour live stream, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search greatest possible self on the Apple Podcast Store and give us a review there. Thanks so much in advance for doing that. I'm going to introduce Ryan in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. This is going to be the gold to help you get to your next level and truly build a massive organization, massive impact, massive revenue. Okay, so let's introduce Ryan and we'll bring him on the screen. Ryan Mulvaney is the founder of Quiver, a self-proclaimed Amazon Amazonaholic and has facilitated over $1 billion in sales on Amazon. He sold Quiver to a strategic partner in 2017 and is still involved there advising clients in big CPG, private equity, venture capital, and startups. And that is just the tip of the iceberg with this epic human being. Ryan, you ready to rock the house, my man? I'm ready. I think that was epic human being. I don't know. I think you're, you're, you're building me up to, to two months. <laughs> well, hey, I like, I like to set the standard time, man. We set the pace high 12 hours. Come on. That's, that's who we are. <laughs> I think we should like under promise over deliver. Be like, this is Ryan. He sells some stuff on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, blow it open. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to dive right in, man. Today's theme is serve with love. What does that mean to you, Ryan? Serve with love. Um, it means serving in a way that's true to you, not true to somebody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. uh, if you lead, you know, it's going to sound corny, but if you lead from the things that you know true to be in your heart, you're, you're going to always stay on the right path. And I think often in life, we, we go down paths that aren't for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're, you're following somebody else's love. So always stay true to yourself. Dude, gold, gold right off the bat, man. You're already over delivering. Great, great job. Keep it up. <laughs> so Ryan, let's dive into who you are today, man. I mentioned it in your intro, but in your own words, why don't you tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you're working on today, what your clients come to you today for, and uh, you know, what you're passionate about, man. Cool. So, so today, you know, in the intro, you said we, we, we sold our Amazon business about two years ago to a strategic partner. Um, so I'm still there day to day. We're two years into a three year earnout um, and sort of laying the groundwork for the next chapter, um, probably within the organization. Um, still helping brands sell products on Amazon um, and starting to sort of document pieces of the journey that I went through from a headspace perspective, for, sort of from inception of the business to exit um, and, and, and what the self talk look like from a motivational standpoint right. um, along the way. That's great, man. I know you have um, like quotes and the the encouragement and the words and the thoughts are important for you on your Instagram. I know you're posting a lot of that stuff out there to kind of like share and inspire people and say, hey, here's how I see the world kind of thing to communicate that to people. Is that is that something that's important to you? Yeah. And it, and it wasn't something that I intentionally set out to do. It was sort of like, you know, or I guess all our, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really an artist that happens to work in a, you know, an Amazon business and use more of the technical side of my brain. Yeah. So I think there was this like starving artist in here being like, Hey, when it's really stressful, just put it down on paper. And I, I started doing that, you know, a couple years ago with just the intention of like, uh, <laughs> something saying something to me, I'm just going to write it down and put it out there to the Instagram world. That's rad, man. I love it. I love it. So we're going to get into your journey and talk about, you know, all the stuff that principles, strategies, things that we can be doing today, but take us back, man. How did you get into Amazon? How did it all begin for you? Um, unintentionally. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, you know, if you go back, I just graduated college. I had had a couple internships um, and I was working at one in particular where I, I wasn't getting paid. And so um, when my fiance came up to me with a textbook and said, hey, sell this on Amazon. She had just finished school. I said, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll try to figure that out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, listed the book and it sold, you know, very quickly, like within like the hour. That's crazy. Um, That's crazy. 
and for like 50 bucks. And I was like, people are just spending 50 bucks randomly on textbooks like that fast. And so <laughs> I was at her parents' house and they had books everywhere. So I, without asking them, sort of listed all their books, um, went to bed and woke up and like half of them had sold. And I was like, this is too easy. Um, and so I went to a library and, you know, libraries are great because they would sell you books for like a quarter, Dirty. 50 cents. <laughs> give them to you because they couldn't even keep up with checking them in. Um, and so I, I partnered with the library and would give them, you know, a third of what I made. I would just slide it into the, it couldn't be formal. So what I would do is basically when you buy books at the library, they're normally on the honor system. Uh-huh. So I would just slide in big bills into their, uh, their little donation box. That's awesome. uh, and, you know, from books, you know, I, I started, you know, the Kindle came out and I got really scared that no one would read books anymore. So started to sell other things, but I was still living at home with my parents. So I figured out what drop shipping was. So I didn't have to like take inventory in yeah. then ended up getting a job at a digital agency um, after the tech startup and realized that I could, I could apply what I knew about selling on Amazon with an actual strategy for brands. And that's really where the genesis of Quiver came, came to be. Wow. That's rad, man. So you had, you had your success in Amazon. What would you say was it that like really... What was the key ingredient or ingredients that created the success early on for you? I think it was necessity. So mm. as soon as I sold the book, um, I was working at a, like a tech startup. I wasn't getting paid. Right. Uh, and when they did finally hire me on, they hired me on at 24 grand a year. So in a sense, I was, I was still not getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> like out of necessity, I, we started selling books. And I remember putting it up there. I, my first store was called One Love Books. And... Um, the whole genesis was to sell books to fund my honeymoon. Oh my uh, and it, awesome. and we did like, and so it was, it was really like, it was this thing and, and, it, and it gave me a sense of, um, of happiness to be able to like make money in a non-traditional sort of manner without a lot of like work. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, it felt, it felt good to hustle, I guess, hustle with something that was actually putting money in my working. Pocket. Yeah. It, it was a small amount of money. You know, you had that sort of, sense of financial freedom mm. that I can make money my own way. Right. All right. That's rad, man. I love it. How did, how did things grow from there? Cause this is all great. Like you kind of, you're getting this inspiration. You're saying, yes, I'm, I'm in, I'm going to do it. What, what, cause everyone can say, Hey, I'm going to go sell, sell stuff on Amazon, but you have some kind of distinction, some kind of mindset, some kind of framework that you're communicating with people, especially these days that really made the difference for you. What would you say that was? I think it's, um, people that think bigger than me. And so when I was working at that tech startup, I was a project manager, which makes you a generalist. Um, <laughs> you're going around and sort of helping everybody get their projects done. Yeah. Um, without really being specialized in anything. And I had a, a sales manager um, and sort of a mentor who came up to me and said, Ryan, you're a generalist. You need to become a specialist at something because that's going to, that's going to allow you to make more money when you're older. Wow. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to be an Amazon guy, which had nothing to do with the business I was at. But I really, at that point, sort of sunk my heels into it. And then that was the reason why I got the next job at the digital agency. And then the owner of that agency sort of started hearing about what I did on Amazon. And he's like, well, how do we, how do we make this bigger? Um, you know, and so I think it's, it's having those people that have, you know, been over the mountains before. Mm. They, like, oh, look, these are the mountains I want to get to. And they're like, you know, there's like way bigger ones behind that. Uh, <laughs> really just you know surrounding yourself with those people that have that that, that vision wow. of, of where, where you need to go and sort of yeah. charter you in that direction. Yeah, yeah. So, what was the transition point for you to um, go from from success on Amazon into Quiver? Like, why why did you say I want to you know build this company? Um, you know, I, I realized like six years ago that brands didn't have any idea what was happening on Amazon, so I saw that as a gap. And I, I saw that because I was working at that, that digital agency and the clients, we would ask them about Amazon and they'd be like, you mean eBay? We're like, no, 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 Amazon. And they, they just didn't know the opportunity. And so I started talking to the owner and we're like, dude, there's a huge gap here. Um, and, you know, while our model today is there's a lot of people out there doing it, back then it was like this total novel thing because right? like, yeah. it's going to get swallowed up. Wow. So you, you said, Hey, there's a need in the marketplace. People don't even know that they can be putting stuff on Amazon and maximizing, you know, even, even greater profits, even greater impact, having Amazon do a lot of the selling for them. If they get the keywords right. And, you know, product descriptions and, you know, market themselves effectively follow a formula. Um, so you saw that that was a, a weakness that a lot of the companies that you were seeing 
had and you said, hey, I'm going to I'm going to maximize this. I'm, I'm going to capitalize on this and really serve people in a big way, help them grow their companies and also grow us. Yeah. And I guess if we're going back to the, uh, you know, leading with love, yeah. uh, was it leading with love or serve, was it? serve with love, serve with love, serve with love. What I realized is the way that I went about selling stuff on Amazon for the years before that um, was sometimes at the detriment of these brands. I would just find their product I'd sell it on Amazon, and, and I realized that they didn't always like that. So when we stood up our business model, we decided we were going to do everything with the brand's best interests at heart as opposed to just trying to grow sales. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit of love there for the brands, which in return lets them love you back. Right. Well, I also hear the the artist in you saying, hey, it's not just about the money, right? Money's great. Money's important. That's needed to grow a business. And it's about what's the what's the soul? What's the essence? What's the purpose of the business? And how do we communicate that effectively? How do we fuel that purpose and fuel the, the evolution of the business and everyone who's a part of it as a whole? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously, a, you know, a big part of it and, and, and how you bring people into that organization, how you stand that up and create that sort of family environment. And then how you choose good brands that you want to work with brands that you feel good about mm. putting out in the marketplace. Um, you know, we're not working with like cigarette companies and alcohol, even though you can't sell those things on Amazon. Like it just wouldn't, it wouldn't fly, you know, to, to rep those types of brands. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like you said, going back to the serving with love, doing do what's aligned with you, do what's true for you, do what feels good, and it's like your greater purpose. If we're not putting our stuff to good use, then like there is a essence of uh, element of survivability. You got to pay your bills and stuff at some level, and then once all those needs are met, and say, okay, am I really using my gifts and my abilities to the to the greatest use? And it sounds like you saw a bigger vision of how you could put your strategies, your experience, your wisdom to greater use in in this kind of new evolution of your brand. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that came about and the quotes that you're writing and sharing this like inspirational content and encouragement? Yeah, and I love how you just phrased that because as you get better at the things that you do, if, if you're if you're sort of leading with that purpose, you should be able to just start spreading that purpose at more scale. Mm. Uh, and so in the beginning, you know, we would work with the brands that you know came into that agency, maybe referrals, and you know we had a lot to learn. Um, and you know we never wanted to sell them something we couldn't deliver on yeah. um, because we wouldn't feel good about that. And so it was always this sort of accountability that we had in, in, in our model without getting too deep into the weeds. We'd actually buy their product and then sell it on Amazon. That was our model. So we made money by selling product as opposed to charging fees. And so we really had to, to sort of eat what we killed. Wow. And then as we you know, got better at that model, we were able to then actually reach out to brands that we were interested in working with. And then we started targeting those brands that were really making a change in the world. And, you know, one of those brands we work with is Dr. Bronner soaps mm. and uh, they're a really cool Castile soap company. They donate a third of their profits to nonprofits. Wow. They push all sorts of initiatives and just a very cool company. And, and one that, um, you know, <laughs> started with purpose. I mean, the purpose was to spread, um, sort of a, 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 a religious way of thinking yeah. and they, they put it on, you know, he, and, and the, I'm going to give you the story because it's really interesting. So the guy who started it um, had a way of thinking about the world and he started handing out pamphlets and nobody really wanted to read the pamphlets. <laughs> what he ended up doing was he started wrapping his scripture around bars of soap and then handing them out because his family made soap and they, they were like, okay, the scripture is cool, but we want more of your soap. Wow. Um, what it was cool is like the, the soap became a billboard for mm -hmm. their message. And it's like, I think it's like third or fourth generation now and they're continuing to spread the message of what they believed in it. And it's, there's still some of the religious stuff on there, but now it's more about like fair trade and, and, and equal treatment for all. And they've really sort of kept it current with, you know, some of the challenges that the, the world faces. And so it's so inspiring to work with brands like that because you're like, okay, how do we, you know, they're, they're doing good at scale. Hmm. And I, that's something that a lot of us strive for. Yeah, dude, that's, that's rad, man. So I really hear that getting behind a, a company, a brand, a mission that is aligned with us, you know, that's the best way to, to create an opportunity for our gifts to come out, for our expertise, for the greatest thing that we have to contribute in this lifetime to come out is like be with something that we believe. Um, tell me a little bit more about building your platform on, on Instagram and these like inspirational quotes and sayings and why that's a priority for you at this phase in your life. Um, you know, what I found was, you know, at a point in my life, I was waking up and getting right on my phone every morning. Mm. Uh, and you know, I was, 
like I just, my phone was there and I wasn't giving myself that breathing space to actually like wake up. Yeah. Process the world. Like, and I would, I would work out really early. I'd work out at 5 a.m. every morning. And before that, I was checking my phone. Wow. And guess what? After that, I was checking my phone. And so what I realized is like I'm sort of passively going through life, you know, distracted by my phone or I'd always have a podcast on there. I was always distracting myself. And I, I was like, what am I distracting myself from? Is it because my job is, you know, there's a lot of stress. I'm, I'm not a stressful person by nature, but I'm like, what? If, like, but maybe that's because I'm distracting myself. And so ultimately what I did was um, I started just writing down the things that I was saying to myself that were, that was keeping me motivated, but I had to pause all the other stuff to actually hear it. I was just hearing everybody else's voices, looking at all the stuff. And finally, like I stopped and, and, and that's sort of what came out of it. And What's interesting about it is if you follow, like, and I see it, but not everybody would see it, but like, I, I can tell you like what was happening on that day when I wrote that message. Uh, and you know, there's pieces of due diligence when we were selling the company that were super stressful, like clients, like saying they were going to leave us if we sold the company, wow. which we go back to the parent which is acquisition and be like, dude, they're going to leave us and, and, and dealing with that. And so it's just like, you know, how do you maintain, you know, a level of like a level head through that problem? That's sort of the self-talk. Like, even if you don't necessarily believe it, these are the things that are going on in my head. And like, this is like, it's like the battle cry almost. Wow. So it's like you did that to reinforce, hey, who am I? I might have all this chaos going on around me, but I want to declare to the world and show up just with a, an image, just with a quote, you know, graphic on social media saying, this is who I am. I'm going to run, remind myself. And I know that there's also people out there who could use this, this inspiration, this encouragement. Yeah, it's sort of like this is the voice in my head and it speaks to me. Maybe it'll speak to you too. Yeah. And I just went through like a month ago and actually like categorized what they all like. Is this one about presence? And this one's about spirituality. And this one's about motivation. And this one's about like letting go. Like it completely over indexed on motivation. I'm like, oh man. Like I started reading. I'm like, man, this was like really repetitive. Like I was saying a lot of just straight motivation things and like, like, I just wonder from like an outsider's perspective, it's like, okay, bro, we hear you. Like everybody's motivational. <laughs> like, well, it's, it's interesting. Do you feel like you needed that motivation at the time? Was that like a, a really important thing for you to like keep going? Yeah, it, it definitely did. And like, I would, I would say the same things, but I'd say them with different words. And, totally. And so that's how you have to hear it. And it, it would definitely like keep me going. Um, as weird as that sounds. That's great. No, no. It's, I think it's, I totally understand it. I think, we have challenges in our life. We face challenges. We go through seasons of life that attempt to teach us something. Sometimes we listen, sometimes we don't, and it has to come back even more intense, even more, you know, like instead of just a feather that life is trying to get us to pay attention to something, it ends up being a two by four, right? And we have to like wake up to something. But if we continuously remind ourselves on a daily basis, hey, this is the season that I'm going through. This is what I get to pay attention to. This is what's important. This is, this is the focus. Where do I place my focus? I think the daily rituals and daily habits of that is what gets people to success um, you know, faster versus people who allow the the minutia, allow the chaos, allow the overwhelm, disempowerment to get them and keep them down and keep them spiraling down versus spiraling up. I completely agree. You know, I think what it comes down to is like, there's this like frequency that we can tune into that's positive and motivational. And it's it really like keeps me going at least. But when we pull out our phone first thing in the morning, or we think about all the negative things in our life and we start out that day, it sort of tunes yourself to that lower frequency. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's little things that I can do to try to elevate it, you know? Yeah. And, and that's sort of, I think, why I'm naturally a very optimistic person and I try to not stress too much. Yeah, yeah. So did you have uh, like books, personal development? Did you Did you have a natural tendency of like learning and growing yourself in the beginning phases of Amazon especially? Um, they sort of before that. And yeah. so like, you know, I, it's funny because when you sell books on Amazon, you come across a lot of books and then you start seeing what sells well. Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should read that book. Yeah. And so there were definitely some books along the way that I, that I read that, you know, I knew about mindset. I knew the power of positive thinking. And these were cause I like, I books sort of came across my plate. Yeah. Um, I had, I'd done a lot of work before that, trying to introduce myself to the, the power of intention and, and, and all, all that stuff. So there was a, there was a bit of a framework there before Amazon. And then sort of once Amazon kicked in, it was sort of like heads down, like, 
Um, you know, I don't, I don't do well in long form reading format. Like I, mm -hmm. I need audiobooks or podcasts. So that's the way that I digest information best yeah. in bite sized tidbits. Um, and so, you know, I think that, you know, over the course of, you know, the business, I sort of went heads down. Let's just focus on the business. And now with like the, you know, the proliferation of, I, you know, of, of um, podcasts and those sorts of things, like I, I listen to a lot more than I used to. Yeah. Yeah. I know uh, you have a, a great family. Tell us how your family has played a, a role in your success in your business. What's that been like for you, man? Um, yeah. I mean, it, it starts with my wife. We met in college and I, it's, it's, it's funny if, if you think back to the moments that fundamentally shift your life. Uh, obviously it was meeting her and we really, we really met through Facebook, which we're on today. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Yes. She, she was roommates with a friend of mine, uh, or not even a friend, like an associate of mine from high school. Wow. Uh, and I was like, Oh, she's pretty cute looking. And she's connected to this other girl that I know, like, let me just send her a message. Uh, this was after I tried to delete my Facebook account like four times, but they, they, they wouldn't really let you delete it. Wow. Uh, and so anyway, we, we met in college, we, we fell in love very quickly. And then, you know, she, she hands me this textbook after a couple years and, you know, starts selling on Amazon. And, you know, I was an engineering major, um, who got three years into that. And then I'm like, I'm going to get a film degree. <laughs> so she really saw me through some things. Yeah. And, you know, when I was my film degree, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to pitch this idea for this show and this script. I wrote like a bunch of scripts. And like, so she always knew that I was this sort of mad scientist. Um, and she's been the most supportive person, you know, ever in that journey. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, so she's amazing. We've been married now for 10 years, wow, almost. Um, oh, wait, no, no, she would, she would hate me if I said that. Uh, eight years, <laughs> nine years, nine years, uh, we have three kids, uh, seven, five, and 13 months. Um, and she keeps going back and forth on a fourth kid. So we'll see. T t <laughs> I love it, man. Um, what what about your kids? Because uh, I think that's always an interesting conversation that goes through people's head. How do they influence your your purpose, your motivation, your legacy, that kind of stuff? Tell us about that. You know, when I was in high school, I wrote it down on a piece of paper that my goal in life was to be able to walk to the beach from my house. Wow. Uh, and then we rented a house on the beach. Uh, my parents did for a summer, and it was like on the sand. And I, I, I amended it and I was like, I need to be able to walk to the beach without shoes on because <laughs> ultimately if, if, you know, sure, if you live a mile away, you can walk to the beach, right. but if you do it without shoes on, that means you're close. It means you're close. <laughs> and so I, wrote that, I, I updated and wrote that down. And, and ultimately growing up, like I love to surf. I love to be in the water. I love the way that it made me feel. I wanted to give that to my kids one day. Yeah. Uh, so when, we, when we sold the business, we were fortunate enough to be able to do that. And so you know, we, we definitely downsized what we had mm -hmm. before to be able to live by the beach, but it forces us to be outside more. We're at the beach all the time. And it's, you know, <laughs> all our kids have Hawaiian names because we like to pretend we're Hawaiian, but we're not. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's funny because we had these kids with these Hawaiian names and we were, we were living, you know, away from the ocean for a bit. I'm like, is this ever going to pencil out? Like we just have these random kids with like Hawaiian names. In the name of, like, <laughs> out of nowhere. Um, but, you know, we, they're very motivating in the, in the process of like, you know, I had a wonderful childhood and I want to do everything in my power to give them the wonderful childhood that I had. Hmm. Uh, I, I was reading, uh, I think it was a quote earlier today that said, don't, don't strive to give your kids what you didn't have as far as like um, possessions, you know, material things, but give them what you wish you had as far as teachings and wisdom and experiences. Um, what would you say is your priority around that about what you want to provide for them in terms of teachings, experiences, and wisdom? It's a great point because I think it is. Have you ever read the, the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yes. Yes. And it, and it talks about first generation wealth. Yep. They, you know, they come into the country, they hustle, they get it. And then they try to give their kids the life they never had, mm. but it's super pampered. It's not, it's not the life that they had doesn't produce the result that they got. Nope. Um, and so I think you're spot on in that quote. And so, you know, what it comes from more of a methodology standpoint with our kids and it's, it's a moving target, right? Because kids are challenged. Do you, do you have kids? Not yet. They're coming. <laughs> They're they're, they're, they're challenging. They're, they're, yeah. they're your, they're your world. They're, they're your greatest challenges. And so <laughs> but I try to, we have, we have two rules in our house and we should probably have five, but I really strive for one and, and we don't maintain it at all. We try <laughs> best, but number one is equanimity. Yeah. Uh, 
which is the ability to stay present and calm no matter what your situation is. Boom. So we try to do that. And then, and then number two is respect. And, and, the, and the reason why they're in that order uh, is because if you maintain equanimity, you're going to maintain respect for people no matter what they're doing to come down on you. Now, I will say that we're not, we're not masters at these yet, um, but those are, those are the two that we have so far yeah. Um, yeah. to try to hold on to. That's great. That's great, man. Um, you mentioned you're like a mad scientist, so I'm sure, sure there's exciting things that you're uh, cooking up, so to speak, creating, designing, and visioning for the future. Can you tell us a little bit more about like what, what you're doing to create, actively create and build for your future? Sure. You know, when we um, sold Quiver, uh, I came in like a week later and you sort of walk around and you're like, wow, this is the thing that, that me and you know, my partners built, but we don't own it anymore. Hmm. How, do, how do we still find relevancy in this business? Um, we have the team, we have the infrastructure, we have the stuff in place for the business to keep coming along. How do we add more value to it? And so I started creating, um, video content just about Amazon and the things that I'm noticing about Amazon, just to really like put it out there and see if that would potentially, you know, drum up business. Yeah. Um, and it, and it started working. And then I realized like, Oh yeah, I really like doing this on camera thing still. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find that balance of, you know, putting content out there that's relevant to Amazon, which is the majority of it. Yep. And then also, what are those things from a mindset perspective that I could put out there that could help people that don't really care about Amazon? How do you, how do you mm-hmm. sort of broaden that message? Um, and I'm, I, I'm like, like I said, a mad scientist. I'm always testing different environments and yeah. different yeah. ways. And my, my latest um, mad science experiment is there's a, there's a book that, that Tolstoy wrote where he does a thought a day for 365 days. So it's like one page. It'll take you two minutes to go through. And it's about all sorts of topics. Some I agree with completely and others I'm like, okay, that's, you know, Tolstoy being Tolstoy. <laughs> um, but the idea is like, he's trying to tune you into that higher frequency on a daily mm. basis. And I think there's a lot of power there. And I realized that like, I was doing that without trying to do that, but it, but the, the message was all in my head. Mm. Uh, it was coming from internal or, or just the things I was seeing. And so, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm going through and reading one of those passages a day, sort of summarizing down to what, you know, what I think is relevant and, and, and seeing if, if people are interested in, you know, 60 seconds on a certain thought process each day. Yeah. So that's the latest experiment. Um, so what, what I hear is, is the experimentation is your, your avenue, your, your daily process, your daily meditation, because you like jumped in head first to Amazon, like create a thriving business around that, but take names. And now you're like, okay, I have all these skills. I want to communicate. I want to serve. I want to make the greatest impact possible. And I'm still discovering, hey, what is, what's, the, what's the sweet spot I find the most joy in? What's the sweet spot I'm able to deliver the most value in? I see people most magnetized to. And you just you use evidence, man. You, you, get, you get views, number of views, number of comments, that how much people engage, how much people write you and like actually say, hey, I, I loved this video. Like Taking all, that all into account gives you, hey, I, I know that this is the pattern that I get to stick to more that stuff takes time, man. And I think a lot of people uh, expect it to happen instantly, but it sounds like you're just really enjoying the process. It's interesting though, because you had success, you know, like huge success and you have success with, with Quiver and with Amazon. A lot of people don't have that, you know, so you have a, a big blessing of saying, Hey, I know when I put my mind to something, I'll, I'll create results. And so now you have kind of like this, this trust knowing that it's all working out. But, but, but the fun part is it's, it's like, I've got results in, you know, building an Amazon business. I don't have results in content marketing. I mean, right. I have some, not a ton, right, right. Not, not a scale. And so it, it's fun to sort of dust it off and start from scratch. Yeah. Um, wow. And again, it's all a part of this, you know, like, because the, I do that type of content and then I, I get better at the Amazon content. So there's this whole thing where it's sort of like you, you, you level up, you know, hopefully through all the things that you're doing, not just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Um, I know there's a popular question going around these days. If you had to start all over at zero, quote unquote, if you lost, like if, if everything was gone, everything you'd built was gone, what would you um, do? How would you build yourself back up? Okay. So I, I, I don't have any money. Yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. Yeah. I have my three kids. I got my wife. Okay. We would uh, move in with one of our sets of my parents, like her, my wife's parents or her parents. They're, they're amazing. Yeah. Um, I would, um, did I get, did I lose my job too? I just lost my job. Yes. <laughs> lost my job and my, okay. I think what, you know, kids cost money. Yeah. 
whether, whether you like it or not. And <laughs> sometimes you can work directly in with your passion to make that money. Mm. Sometimes you can't. So the first thing I would do is, is get a job, bring in an income yep. so that I could support my family and get us back on the path to getting out of our parents' house. That would be my first priority. My first priority would be for my family's independence. Um, ideally, that would be married with some level of passion. Yeah. Um, because when you've got passion fueling it, you're going to go so much further. Yeah. Um, but it would be more out of necessity to start. Yeah. And then if it was solely out of necessity, the passion piece would be, uh, you know, sort of on the back burner, but always there because you need that thing to balance it out, to keep you safe. When, in order to be good at this, you need to have some level, at least I do. Yeah. Uh, and then sort of build it over time. That's a great question. What, w- what would you do? <laughs> That's, I've never, never been asked that. Let's see. If I had to start all over, what would I do? Um, I think I would, I would find someone online. There's so many people online, uh, you know, brands that I align with that I value. And I'll say, I will do whatever the heck it takes to work with you because I believe in you. I believe in what you're, you're doing. I'd like study the marketplace, see, see what brands I align with. Um, and it could be, you know, any, any industry, I would say I'm a great communicator and I'm great at like working systems, designing processes, things like that, engineering background too. Uh, so I'd say, you know, I just want to help you build your infrastructure, build your impact, whatever that looks like, just, you know, throw me in, pay me whatever you want. And I will, I will work my ass off for you to get this, this brand and this message out there. I would jump into somebody else who already, who already has an infrastructure, you know, and not probably not too big because then I just get, I become a cog in the machine. I would do it at somewhere, you know, seven figure mark, like million dollars, $3 million so that I still feel like a valued member of the team and, and contributing to their growth. And I develop my skills and my uh, abilities in there. And then I would say, okay, how can I take this and either go out on my own or like demonstrate what I've already accomplished in my experience and my wisdom to move up and get more responsibility and make a bigger impact? That's a great answer. And what I love about it is uh, Amazon, uh, Jeff Bezos will come out to his shareholder meetings, all of his finger like this. And it's to symbolize that it's still day one. And like, no matter how Mm -hmm. they get, they're going to continue to act like it's still day one. Just like the things that you just said. And really what it ultimately means is you're hungry and you're willing to take chances and willing to look silly in the present, knowing that in the future it's going to pencil out. And so I think that it's a, it's a mentality that I try to hold on to, to never you know, rest on your laurels or to think that you're, you're bigger than you are mm-hmm. because we're not like you, you, it could go away so fast. Um, and ultimately you have to, you know, stay hungry to prevent that as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I know you're, you're like, you're able to influence people at a higher level because of what you've achieved and accomplished. Uh, and, and there's also people who you like look up to, mentors, coaches, people who you aspire to be more like. What are qualities that you look for when you're looking for mentorship and people who you want to, you know, circles that may may have seemed out of reach that you're wanting to enter into? Like, what do you look for and what's your approach to get into those higher level inner circles? I love like, so it's funny because I don't, I don't really like superhero movies, yeah. um, but I, I look for superheroes and it, mm. it's an analogy that a friend of mine, you know, used and he's like, Hey, what's your superpower? Mm. Like, what are you the best at? And so trying to find the people that, that are the best at something and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It's like, if I really got into making pasta, <laughs> he'd be like, who is like the, the, the definitive that I'm vegan, best vegan pasta maker out there and try to, you know, try to connect with them. Um, and so I think it's, it's those people that are, and, and it, look, they don't have to be the best. They could be like one of the top, you know, people. I, I really love people that are head over heels into whatever it is that they are into. They're not just like, again, they're specialists. Like the guy told me, not, not generalist. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's probably the number one criteria. Not so much. I mean, what you've done is important. Who you are is also important. Like, you, you know, I resonate with, with certain types of people and there's other types of people that just, you know, we don't, we don't operate on the same sort of frequency. And so I think that, you know, reading sort of the the mood and the vibe, I think is also super important. Yeah. Yeah. What, what would you say is the resonance that you look for? What are, what are those qualities? I heard passion is important for you. Like people who are passionate and like striving, pushing the envelope of, of innovation and growing things and the brand and making an impact. Would you say those are all pretty high up there for you? Certainly. Yeah. And I think just different perspective. Mm. Um, you know, I look at the world through my lens and I try to have as much of an open mind as possible, but ultimately like I, I haven't seen the life experiences of, 
you know, everybody. And so, you know, what are they going to, how are they going to look at this, you know, problem differently than me and, and, and solve it in a different way? Because I think if we combine the two brains together, it's one of those like, yes. this, you know, sounds bad. Like one, like one plus one is three yes, uh, or six if, if you've got the right sort of brains working on it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mastermind ability. So I, I hear like, who can I become more? Who, who can I, when, when partnered up, when synergized up, who can we like, you know, create a greater whole, a greater uh, force of impact and business growth and serving people and adding value to the world because we brought our unique special abilities together? Sure. Yeah. And it's, it's exactly how we scaled our business. It mm-hmm. was, you know, I was this Amazon geek. My, my, my first partner was an agency guy. Mm-hmm. The second partner financed it. So, you know, right there, we're locked in. And, and, and beyond that was an amazing salesman. Mm-hmm. What, like, so we had the sales piece figured out. We had the business acumen sort of piece figured out. Exactly. I was the Amazon and then we, we sort of leveled up together. Uh, and then, you know, very quickly in, like I realized there was going to be a whole logistics piece to this business that I was not the best brain for. It's like, all right, let's hire somebody in. We probably can't afford her yet, but we're going to bring her in anyway and, and scale that way. And so it's really just knowing what you're good at, staying in your lane and then, and then, Filling up your, you know, your bench with, with the people that, you know, complement the, complement the team you want to build. Yeah. Yeah. This is gold, man. Gold. Um, I know you're focused on like startups and, you know, helping, helping businesses grow. What do you look for like key ingredients that are in place to, to advise them or to, you know, help them achieve even more success? You know, I think it starts with why, like, why are they actually going in and doing the things that they want to do? Yeah. And it, it, it's, there's a really good, I think it's, is it Simon Sinek? I, I think I remember the guy's name. Anyway, yep. he has this whole Ted talk that he does and it's all about starting with why and how we focus on the what and the how, but we don't really get to the why. And it's, if you do, if you do the exercise and, and you can do it, you know, watching his video, you can also just ask why five times when you're doing something like why, 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 why. And it, it usually gets you down to the root of why you are trying to go about doing something. So I start there. Um, <laughs> As long as, as long as they're, they're open to like a philosophical discussion, yeah. you know, if yeah. not, we can start with the, what they're selling. Mm-hmm. Um, and in terms of success on Amazon, it's going to be something that's differentiated, something that you could put in the hands of an influencer and they're going to be like, Oh, this is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, you know, it's really just the keys of success for a brand nowadays and not just necessarily how to sell more on Amazon. Um, you know, the team's also very important. Again, like what are their superpowers that that team's bringing to the table? That's going to, you know, ensure success. If, if they're coming to us and they're saying, look, we don't know anything about brand building, but we have this product and we want you to build our brand essentially on Amazon. It's like, good luck. Like it's not going to happen. Wow. You need to be doing all these other things off of Amazon to complement the effort on Amazon. Wow. So it's like, like really understanding people's superpowers. How do you, how do you know if someone's communicating effectively their superpower? Like, what do you, what, what do you feel? What do you sense about them or sense about a team and their ability to actually execute on those superpowers? How do you, how do you know? I just go to the work. So mm. for instance, they're like, Hey, we're this amazing, like Instagram marketing company. I'm like, all right, let's see, let's see your brand yeah. or let's see your clients. Let's look at the engagement. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, if they're really good Facebook marketers, it's like, okay, let me see the sales. Mm. Because if, if you know how to do that, we could, we could point those Facebook ads towards Amazon and we can do really well. Mm. And so I think it's, you know, the, the proof is in sort of the pudding um, of, of, of what they've done to assess, you know, if they can or can't. Because, you know, it, it is very easy to be like, yeah, I'm really good at this. And then, you know, ultimately, I think also too, it's just, it's for us to know like what we're good at, like, and what we're not good at, like what clients don't fit our thing, because we don't want to, we don't want to work on somebody that we don't think we can add, you know, value to. Right. Right. So it's like staying in, in your own lane, knowing what, what we can bring to the table and what we can't and being willing to say, if someone says, Hey, I need this, can you do it? And it's not in our wheelhouse. And we say, no, we can't do that. You know, but we can do this. If that works for you, great. Let's move forward. If not, Hey, we appreciate the, the time and consideration for, for working with us. We want you like in integrity, we want you to find someone who's a genius at that stuff. So, you know, maybe here are some recommendations or, you know, we wish you the best of luck with, with finding that person. Yeah, I think it's it's one of the pieces that, you know, I, I was able to sit next to the, you know, the, the founder of, of the agency that we started the business with and my other, my other partner who's did the sales and we were nev- we were hungry, but we never sold like we were hungry. Mm. Um, it's always like, hey, we're here to bring you value. And if we can't deliver upon that, like we will refer you to somebody. We just, we're just here to help. Um, and 
we always ran the business that way. And, and our model is a very unique model. So it wasn't a fit for a lot of people. And we, the amount of um, people we met with versus closed is, is way, our ratio is way off. Wow. But I would say on most of them, we didn't close them, not because they didn't want to like work with us necessarily. It just wasn't a fit. Or we, we didn't, we couldn't deliver what exactly what they wanted. And so it was like a mutual, like, Hey, this isn't going to pencil out. Hmm. Uh, so I think it's, it's having an honest conversation with yourself. And, and one of the benefits of, of exiting your company um, is that you, you can really come at it like unbiased and you're like, look, this, you know, we just are here to help. And so I think it's just such a, a, a beneficial way to look at the world, starting with like, what can you do to give to them as opposed to what can you take out of their pocket and put into yours? Wow. Yeah, I know. I, I, I really strive on like all of my calls, coaching calls, different things like that. Even if they, they aren't signed up as a client yet, say, how can I leave this person better off than when we first started? You know, whether it's educating them, whether it's, you know, giving them information on how they can make a better decision, whatever it might be. It's like, hey, how do I how do I really serve this person in that time that we have together? And I think that's a, a really powerful like place of mind to come from. 100%. And you, start, you serve without expectation. Like yeah. you just because like you're just trying to help them out because when we help people in the world, the world inherently gets better. Um, and, and, and maybe that comes back to you directly from them mm. or maybe it just comes back indirectly because there's someone that's happier in the world as a result. And I think that's really what it comes back to. Yeah, man, this is, this is great. Um, I know you mentioned motivation is a big part of what you're sharing on Instagram and in your messaging and stuff. Uh, also, I, I hear a lot of spirituality in what you're sharing about, like just being a good, good human being, you know, like really showing up in a, in a great way. Can you share a little bit more about, you know, where that comes from or why that's important to you? Um, sure. So when we, when we sold the business about two years ago, um, I would joke with people about a year into it. And I was like, man, I, I, know, I knew they would like take the company. I didn't know they'd take like a third of my brain. Um, <laughs> we had like so much going on in yeah. and, and reporting structures and, and the parent company was amazing. Like they, they didn't come in and change our culture. They didn't come over the top on anything. They let us run our business the way that we wanted to run the business but I still felt this sort of like distraction. Um, and so I, I ended up listening to a podcast called the secular Buddhist. And it was, it was basically, it's like he opened it up and he's like, look, don't listen to this podcast to become a better Buddhist. Listen to this podcast to become a better, whatever you already are. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm into that. And so what it sort of distilled down to was like, what I took from it, it was an episode about enlightenment or something like that. And, and what I, what I found was I, I just completely not mindful of the things that I was doing. That's why I was forgetting things just because I was always distracting myself with a podcast. Like I'd gotten back into that. Like I was, I probably wasn't writing as much and I just stopped. I was like, stop all of it, sit down. Like, why are you going through all this distraction? And, and through sort of, you know, meditating now, which started in December. So I've meditated, you know, every probably, I missed probably like a couple of days, but since December, um, you know, call it like 20, 20, 20 minutes a day. And it just helps me like stay focused on the things that matter and then realize that like, look, and I haven't had some like, <laughs> like light shiny moment of spirituality. And, and I'm, I'm really like, if you classify me, I'm more agnostic than anything, but like, I feel like the mystery of our origin is such a fascinating piece and somehow maybe sitting in meditation will get me there. But as a result, like just sitting in meditation is making me a better human. So I continue to sit. Uh, and I think that's, you know, if, if you, if you come out of it that way, um, it sort of is a good metaphor for life. That's it's like we, we can strive to get to something, you know, I guess it's like the journey, not the destination piece. I guess that's a real simple yeah. way. To yeah. Yeah. And also I hear the um, being unattached, right? It's like, how do, how do I play in this present moment? Not like be, be obsessed with some future moment. And anytime I'm not there, I remember that I'm not there and like experience lack and disempowerment, but say, Hey, I'm stoked to go there. And Hey, all the magic and, and like the, the gold is here. The, the presence, the, the ability to, you know, love life and be with kids and be with significant others and be with amazing business partners with brilliant skills and abilities. Like that's all in the present moment. So if we, if we take ourselves out of the present too long, we really start to steal from our, our joy and from, from everything that we have to experience. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. And I, I think the biggest, one of the biggest takeaways for me was they just talked about how we layer, you know, things on, and then we see the world through these layers, these mm -hmm. filters, these, these wants, these desires. And it doesn't matter if you're Christian or Muslim or Jewish or Buddhist, like those, that, that's, that's truth. Like <laughs> there's, you can't argue that like we see the world for what we want to see in it. Yep. 
Um, you know, like if, if, if you're a guy and you're into girls and you go down the street, you see girls, you see more girls and you're going to see guys. That's just like, we've been wired and we've been wired that way because somewhere along the line, we were taught that's the way the world is. Yep. If you pull back and, re- and and start questioning some of these assumptions that we have about the, the things and the mannerisms and you start watching yourself through those actions, you know, you start seeing it instead of being it. It really like, <laughs> it sounds very woo woo, but like it starts changing the way that you go through the world and it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's pretty transformative if you can pull back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really when you're able to zoom out, like in your daily meditation sessions, you're able to see what is running my life, what's going on. Like, let's get, let's get reconnected to some higher, higher version of myself versus the day-to-day minutia and remember like how powerful we are, how, how loving we are, how, you know, blessed that we are to live in this country and have all the circumstances and things that we have, you know, versus what, what we could be doing in a different country at a different, you know, uh, identity, so to speak. Um, so I think it's really important to stay present to that. And, uh, the, the woo woo, I love that, man. I love this, just like life. What, what are we here for in life? And if we keep zooming out, keep going like meta while staying grounded and getting stuff done, taking action like that, I think that really provides for a amazing experience in life. I, I was listening to this cool talk yesterday and it was talking about this guy that, you know, you're sitting in meditation and like you start thinking, like you focus on your breathing. And then after like one minute, like you get this pain in your stomach and then you're like, Oh man, that's, that's probably because I ate this thing. Maybe I'm gluten. Like I have a gluten intolerance and, and <laughs> your brain gets caught into these cycles that like you get pulled into it. And then it's your job to sort of come back to that breathing. He's like, he's like, he's like, we have like five things we get pulled into health, job, income, family. There's like five recurring stories in your life. He's like, he's like in every year, every like year that goes by, you just update the dialogue, but it's this, it's really the same stories. And what happens is when you come back to just trying to breathe, it's not necessarily that that thought process goes away. It just becomes less important because you're detaching away from it. Uh, and it sort of loses that, that firepower. And over time, from what I've read, is like those voices become quieter because they're oftentimes not advantageous to, to, to be around. They're not yeah. reality. It's right. what you're thinking. And it's like, it's like what you focus on expands. So, so many people are caught up in that dialogue and that's the truth. That's reality. That's what they're paying attention to. And so they continue to experience that dialogue because that's what they're focusing on or resisting or pushing away or it's consuming their energy and their focus versus if we pay attention to our breath and like let the chatter go, but we're just here connected with our body, connected with our sensations because the sensations, the hearing, what do we hear? What do we smell? What do we touch? What do we taste? That's all in the here and now. Out, right, right, like this, this the keyboard, the the texture of this MacBook, the quality of that silver ring on your finger, right? It's like it's so so powerful, you know. And and uh, it's when we're present, that's when we can really experience life. And um, you know, it's like st- it's not stealing our joy. We're not stuck in some endless loop or cycle. We're here and now. We're really able to connect with people. Mm-hmm. I, I think the, the the way that I sort of think about it, it's sort of like if you've ever had a bad dream. And all of a sudden, you're like, <gasps> you wake up. And you're like, whoa, that, that wasn't real. Mm. It, it's the same sort of, there's a reason why it's called awakening. And you don't have to be asleep to need to be awakened. Wow. Uh, and, you know, and ultimately, we live in, like, these dream states all the time. And we miss out on, on the present, you know, the present. So I love it. I love how deep we're going. <laughs> I've had a, a cold brew. Maybe that's an inspiring all. <laughs> We're hitting our stride here, Ryan. We need a whole nother hour, man. <laughs> like, like a six hour marathon, just one speaker. This is this is awesome, man. This is really, really cool. Um, I want to bring it back to, you know, what people can expect with continuing their journey with you, staying connected with you. Um, what do you want to keep delivering to them as far as your brand, your content and what you got coming out, man? Um, so, you know, if, if, if you're interested in getting in Amazon um, and you want to stay sort of current with I was wondering when you drank. Oh, by the way, is that, was that Quest? It is Quest. <laughs> I was at their, their HQ yesterday. They're a client of ours. Dude, they're awesome. Freaking awesome. Tom, Tom Billy is freaking a love impact theory. Tom Billy is just a genius. Freaking genius. They're all, they're all amazing people there. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, though, when you ate. I'm like, when does he eat? Like when, I didn't see the lunch break in the schedule. Um, <laughs> so if you're interested in getting into Amazon, um, you know, I post stuff pretty regularly. LinkedIn's a, re- and I put it on LinkedIn. It's a really good environment to just learn about the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a course there that I taught, which, um, it's through like LinkedIn learning. And 
you can get a free 30 day trial, which means you can watch it before the trial <laughs> period's over. So you Thank can you. probably watch it for free uh, if you wanted. Um, but there's a ton of other good courses out there. Just go to YouTube, search for how to sell stuff on Amazon. Um, on the on the mindset stuff, I do I do sprinkle some of that in through LinkedIn. Um, I'm putting it on Instagram uh, as well, and I'm I'm sort of contemplating with the idea of you know I'm reading this book every day. It's a page a day, um, and maybe spinning up like a digital book club where we just like read every day and everyone can share their thoughts. And it it, it should be like, look, you're I know you're on Instagram or I know you're on Facebook every day. If you spend two minutes on this and go back to your normal feed, maybe it'll tune you into that, you know, a, a higher frequency of life that is not normally on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm, I'm dabbling with that thought right now. So an online book club sort of a thing just for fun. It's, it's like totally growing yourself, man. I, I just hear when people are tuned in with what you got going on, staying connected with you, they'll, they'll be growing. They'll be advancing, evolving, awakening themselves. That's, that's who you are, man. Yeah, well, I selfishly like wanting, I, I, I put my content on LinkedIn about Amazon so that I can connect with other experts on Amazon that make me smarter. Yeah. And the idea is like, look, like a lot of the stuff that is going to, that could potentially come out of this book club, it's about spirituality. It's about belief. It's about, you know, being a good person. Like I don't have any of those answers. And so selfishly, I want to create this community and bring in much smarter people than myself so that I can, you know, draft off of them um, and we can sort of do it together. Yeah, I love it, man. That's that's why we do this 12-hour marathon. Like, I love learning, man, and I love giving this wisdom to people, connecting them with with people like yourself, Ryan. And for everyone who's tuning in, I want them to take those next steps with you. Uh, what what can they do? What's the websites that you want them to go to? You mentioned LinkedIn, Instagram handle. Tell them that stuff, man. Um, yeah, so LinkedIn just Ryan Mulvaney, R Y A N Mulvaney, M U L V A as in Victor A N Y, and then same thing on Instagram, just Ryan. I think it's Ryan dot Mulvaney. Okay. Um, and then I, you go to ryanmulvaney.com. It, there's links on Instagram and LinkedIn to go back to my website where you just get in touch if you want to get in touch. Dude, sweet, man. Hey, I honor you, Ryan. I love what you're doing. Everyone, have a conversation with Ryan. Stay connected to his stuff and uh, just keep growing. Keep awakening yourself and everyone around you, man. I love, love what you're doing. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. I appreciate you too. Have a great day, okay? Yeah.